Hey, let's start this recording right now. Okay. Ooh, go. Okay. Um, so I guess that's what it started with CPI to, to see, you know, kind of like an ear on the wall and like what are faculty talking about and how can we support students as we A, create the Brock U101 uh, as um, that incoming first year student support. It'll happen in August. I'll speak to that, but also just in general. Uh, so I am curious, like truly 100% curious, what were you thinking about when you joined the session? and what you're hoping to find out or talk about. So if you want to throw that in the chat, um, honestly, I'm going to start like glancing at it because I do want this to be useful for your time instead of me just barreling ahead and saying, this is my agenda. This is what I want to talk about. So maybe we'll, uh, I'm just going to talk a bit slower. I've got a PowerPoint, I'll load it up, but see what comes up in the chat. Okay. Okay, community in the classroom. Actually, I shouldn't go to my PowerPoint because then I can't see the chat. Boy, I'm thinking straight today too, so there you go. Honestly, that's why I started using the share PowerPoint as opposed to sharing my screen. Yeah, okay. Because then you get to stay, that. You I've done stay that too. in the room. All right, let's do that. I just discovered this week that all links you put in there are clickable too. So I like on my mind. Yeah, is gone. we do that yeah. when we're doing uh, students um, so great. because they can watch the video on their own side, which is super cool. Just got to see where my document is. Yeah. That's also the disadvantage I find is that um, it wants to load your most recent SharePoint files and you have to do a browse and look for things. I'm sorry, I know that I'm probably distracting you from doing it, but <laughs> filling how in this air. So there you go. Engage awesome. the students, collaborative space for course, connect with each other, community. Okay. Okay, so um, I'm just wondering whether I should speak to, so you probably saw the announcement uh, for student, incoming students that uh, there's a whole BU for you program. So I'm and my team are mostly involved in the Brock U101 uh, portion of that, which is the academic prep. But the, bra, uh, the BU for you, the larger piece, is really starts with Smart Start. So the usual Smart Start, but online. Then it's shifting to the, the academic prep in August, asynchronous. And then it goes to the whole engagement thing. So I'm seeing a lot of comments in the chat about engagement. So Part of that is the building of engagement communities. Um, that's still in formulation right now. So if you, anyone is curious about that, um, there are working groups that are, I mean, they're quite, they're quite expansive, <laughs> big working groups on that, but exactly what that will look like. The focus for those will be the incoming first year though, this whole BU for you. Um, so I think it's uh, good to know that that's happening for the first year students, but also, I mean, honestly, to inform other, uh, groups as well. So this is outside of the classroom, just bringing students together. They will be structured right now by uh, faculty first program, you know, get those common students together, but also with interest uh, based groupings. Looking at starting with like 40 per group run by uh, upper year student mentors, and they will also have a student lead for the student mentor groups. It's going to be a lot about communication, engagement, uh, so partnership across so many partners across the university say what's happening, what's going on and how to get those students engaged um, and not lost in all the information. So that's happening. Is there any questions about the larger BU for you? So I can try to answer them as best I can. So I guess my main question, are people curious about the Brock U 101? <laughs> Looking at the chat, because I did come prepared to speak to that a little bit, hoping for input as well because uh okay we i got a yes Woohoo! yes all I need. please please i want to know everything <laughs> okay one yes is enough for me i'm just teasing um so i'll go over a little bit and uh we do have a sakai site started as well so uh we'll see how much detail you want from from where we're at um so essentially this is the larger bu for you program so it's got a little bit of timelines as well you have a thousand first year students in chis I hope you do this about September as well, because uh, I don't know what enrollment's looking like. I just saw 
something about 20% below what, I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, <laughs> a lot of students. Um, so this is the flow on this, what I just mentioned about the BU for you with the timelines. So Brocky 101 is happening in August. So there's going to be clear communication for students like this is your next step. And then the engagement communities are starting later in August. Um, I know some universities, they start even earlier to try and get those students in those communities right away and discussing and kind of hook them in. Um, so ours, I don't know, it seems like it's a little bit later, but um, they are, there would be a lot of shuffling and changing that students have in the summer, even just confirming their registration and, and, and a lot of movement. So they are moving towards the end of August for that to start. Um, the welcome week, again, all virtual kind of stuff. And then just really thinking about the full year experience. So um, having a lot of larger partnerships to say, what, is, what does this look like? What are the opportunities? Can we do it by theme? Can we work together so that students can navigate that first year um, in a, a thorough, like holistic way, but also um, not to lose anyone and to, to create that engagement. So that's going to be happening. So let's talk about the Brocky 101. Just leave it on the screen for a minute. This is just an overview, just what it is. Uh, the, there are five lessons. Um, they're going to be asynchronous. Students can work through. Uh, access by August. We're aiming for August 1st. It will be a Sakai site. They can revisit all year if they want. It doesn't go away. I think every four years they clean them out, so <laughs> it'll sit there. Um, and uh, what else? We will have form and chat available. We'll be monitoring it on our end. Uh, we also have student staff, so we'll see how busy that gets. It's not, that's not a requirement though. That's just an opportunity. Um, we're going for about eight hours for completion and self-paced. Yes, Linda, we have had some contributions for this program and I'll explain a few, um, few examples. Input at this point is, uh, is great because these are students across all faculties. Um, right now we have a few sample lectures and syllabi that we've gotten some professors right now as a way of, of students to see a sample and work with those samples in Brock U101. So that, that has been, um, we have those already. Uh, we're working through them, but that was an example of how faculty is involved. Here's an overview of the five lessons. Uh, four, the first four are the universal kind of lessons that all students will have. And the le last one is a lesson option. So basically they have three choices. So I'm just gonna not distract too much with my talking while you look through the content. So you see syllabi here a couple times, and that's kind of where we've gotten specific examples from professors. We've got some recorded lectures coming our way. Tim Murphy was uh, a great enough to provide a sample. I think we're getting one from um, Glenn Scribble Chang. I don't know how to say it. Is it counting? We're just mixing it up, you know, a little cycle, a little counting, you know, see what it looks like. Uh, and also we have one that's pop culture, it's a superhero course, which, hey, that sounds cool. I'd like to watch that. So a few uh, sample lectures. Uh, that's a good point for returning students. So essentially this is going to be a one-click access. So a joinable site through Sakai, you might have seen them before. So here's a link, click. Do you want to join U101? Yes, click. So we are communicating this through Smart Start for incoming students, but again, it could be an option for all students. It's a, as easy as a joinable link could be added to Sakai or um, to the syllabi um, for professors' courses or whatever. We're also, it's all trackable, so there could be some, this is my next slide here, the incentive. So I, I do push for incentive quite a bit because I know that the students who really are high achievers, engaged, they're going to do it, right? They're, but it's the ones dear to my heart. I mean, these are the students that we support a lot. We do a lot of the at-risk programs. And these are typically the students who need a bit of incentive for lots of reasons. Maybe they're just working or trying to work this summer. I don't know what that looks like, but they're working a lot. They've got illness, family needs, whatever. So they need to have the what's in it for me. Yes, there's going to be an automatic co-curricular engagement kind of certificate thing. But again, the keen ones, that's going to interest them, right? Um, the other things that we've done before are some kind of participation grade. So we are tracking. Uh, we also have developed a reflection activity that can be implemented like maybe a seminar activity that TAs could grade that's specific for the class so that if they, you know, let's say you're in five classes and all classes are giving participation grade for completion. Well, they've done one thing 
and they're getting credit. I mean, I don't mind because professors don't mind, but this is an option to get them to do something that's more course specific. So the reflection is essentially choose one strategy from each of the five lessons, identify why it would be helpful for, for this course, that kind of activity. So it's causing them to, to reflect on the U101 in relation to the specific course. So that's available. The other thing we've seen through Goodman, which is super cool and um, I don't think we have the money for it, but it is an option if a faculty wants to perhaps give one student um, uh, like an honorarium or something towards their financial account, let's say towards tuition, whoever completes. So let's say 5,000 students, oh, we don't have 5,000 coming in, but okay, let's say 1,000 of Joanne students in Chiz. <laughs> the whole faculty of social science, $1,000 will go to the student, uh, one student who completes it. I don't know. It's an interesting concept regardless. So um, do people want to see the Sakai site or do you have any questions about any other component? There is a question about faculty being able to see, being able to see, have access to the, the materials. Yes, we can add people to after this uh, meeting, anyone who's attended would want to be, a, um, let's say, tell me if you don't want to be added. You can always <laughs> take it off. Um, it is very raw though. So I'm going to ask Sarah Kylie, you're here, right? My colleague. I'm here. <laughs> can you can you do I'm, the honors? Sure. Okay. I'm going to do full desktop because I find I like the functionality of doing it all, and I hope you just don't mind seeing everything. Um, so again, as Maggie said, this is raw. I've just been um, taking all of the ideas from our team and trying to uh, coordinate them onto the site, and it's changed at least three times over. But we welcome students to the site and we have a checklist here of the five modules that Maggie shared with you and students can see here again what they're going to do, which align with the modules on the side. This welcome video will introduce the whole program, the Sakai site, the purpose, where we're going, etc. Um, from here, students can move into the first module or lesson, which is planning your term. And I saw someone said on the side, um, you know, the self-directed learning strategies, that's going to be in here. So we talk in the section um, about how to read a syllabi, or syllabus, sorry, and, um, you know, what that will look like in terms of planning your term strategies for self-directed learning, time management, um, setting your own routines and schedules so you don't have decision fatigue, um, Etc. So we actually have those um, syllabi donated to us and we're going to remove from them anything that, um, you know, is identifiable to the course like textbook, professors names, etc. And just leave some of the language students may see and the outlines students may see because they may have the same uh, information, but they might look different. So getting the opportunity before September to see those we feel would be beneficial so students can kind of understand that it's not always going to look exactly the same. So it's a sample. Um, from there, we ask students to um, complete this planning your term module, which will go through all of that material at the end of a module. Sorry, I've been into this one, but they click through and they have to click through the entire part and there's activities um, throughout, but um, they have to go through the entire module in order to get the certificate at the end, which then they'll upload to us as submitting an assignment. We also are going to provide um, to planning templates, calendars and things like that, and they can use the syllabi that we provide to plug those dates in. Um, we were just in another meeting and they were saying that this may be a good spot as well to provide links and our resources for um, student wellness. If, if you know if this seems overwhelming planning your term, here are some strategies, things like that. So kind of having all those different connections um, with this task of planning that term and, and that self-directed learning. From there, our next tab is tech skills, seminars and assignments. We could probably do a ton of things with tech skills, but we narrowed it into the seminars and assignment pieces because those are big pieces of many courses, um, how you connect with people and how you're going to connect with the material on the page. So um, again, here they go in, they see what they're going to be doing, they can check it off as they go. And the first piece is connecting with others online. In here we have links to videos that students can go to to sort of address the different aspects of working with Sakai and the connected um, 
platforms. So the first video will be something about forums, chats and blogs, the differences between them, why you don't just openly chat in a forum. Uh, it's more of an academic uh, environment and then etiquette. And with that, we've included a um, tip sheet on reaching out to professors and TAs, email etiquette, etc. So basically all forms of connecting and the etiquette that surrounds that. And I'll just do a quick um, yeah. reference here too, as, as we collaborate with partners, uh, we've talked with the student at risk team as far as non academic misconduct and they're working on a little bit more clarity for students on engagement. So imagining the online environment, what do you wear? What's in your background? Just things to be conscious of. So that might go there as well. Yes, it's a whole new world. <laughs> um, from there, we talk about uh, Sakai itself. If you have to enter information, so if you've been to one of the CPI um, presentations, they, you know, we're talking about the need to understand the mic or the wand or whatever you want to see that image as. Um, how to upload images, Echo 360 videos, things that professors may ask, might ask students to do. So we're going to open that um, input uh, information window and sort of go through those tools. Um, and then mention again where to where to look on Sakai for more help. And I think I just again I keep Please. interrupting. A shout out to Leanne. Uh, thanks for meeting because uh, a lot of these ideas have come from Leanne Fisher and CPI, because there's their faculty facing kind of supports to say okay what is the student facing and where you know what are they going to be asked to do and where is the sticky points. So we'll uh, we'll be definitely bouncing this off again. Sorry Leanne uh, to take a look and make sure we've hit the mark, as it were. The last video we planned is just to incorporate two platforms, Teams and Life Size. Um, and we're going to sort of talk about the ins and outs of those. And we encourage students at this point to go into those, practice muting your mic, the things that Julie was talking about at the beginning of this meeting. So, you know, change your background, closed captioning, et cetera, so that students are, are familiar with that and feel comfortable knowing, OK, I've been asked to attend seminar through Teams or Life Size. How do I do that? Where do I go? That kind of thing. And we're actually including uh, over here. I believe this was Leanne that said to to do this or maybe, but uh, links directly to those those platforms. So I don't have life size on here yet, but I will. Uh, again, yeah, it's it's sort of the outline. Um, <laughs> from here we go to assignments on Sakai. Um, this assignment is here, but it's it's being changed. I made it too in depth. The teacher in me. Um, <laughs> so um, it's it's. Uh, but what the assignment will ask them to do is to participate in a poll on Sakai and then enter some information back onto the assignment and upload it as a submission, so that they can practice things like um, opening it in the desktop app because that functionality works better, um, etc. And and where to go for help? That hallway talk that students can have in the chat. That's where to go if you're you know I can't get this you know uh, assignment to open etc. Um, and with this, I think there was something else I wanted to mention, but I'm forgetting. So I think oh, that was the one. I think this is the one we might do as a scavenger hunt assessment, like yes. hide clues in the different tasks. So to to actually figure out the uh, riddle or the math equation, they will have had to done, done those tasks. That's going to be our assessment piece. Yeah, it's going to be fun. <laughs> um, and we'll have uh, other helpful links here at the bottom. Um, from there, they go to note taking and exam prep. And in this section, um, we've got a, a video on different note taking strategies. We are going to have one of our peers who is a, a one note whiz um, show students how they can take notes online if they prefer to do that um, rather than writing them down on, on paper. Um, and then and that's going to have a bit of a science focus because that's that's where he is. Um, and then students we've we've had professors donate, as mentioned before, um, sort of to align with the syllabus, um, a lecture. So we've got uh, about three 10 minute lectures um, that are going to be styled differently. We've got a narrated um, PowerPoint. We have an actual video of the professor standing with the whiteboard, etc. So um, students can see the different versions. We think that there will be a lot of anxiety about what online learning looks like, um, and we want to get students excited about the possibilities that go with this. And then with that, we provide templates for different types of note taking strategies like the Cornell method, and students can attend the lecture and practice using that again before September so they feel empowered like they've got some strategies to go in with. 
From there, we move into exam preparation, highlighting the fact that exam preparation starts at the beginning of the course when you see the syllabus and you know the um, assessment pieces. You can sort of tailor your note taking to that. We're going to explain some strategies on how and then provide again templates for maybe some study strategies uh, students can use depending on what course they're in. Maybe if they're in science, we're looking at uh, key terms. If they're writing, we look at webs, etc. I don't want to be too thorough. You know, you know what you're doing. Um, Julia, actually, I, met, I had you here. I'm hoping to include in the resources a video on visual note taking because I think that that's such a cool um, concept. It's new to me, uh, and I love that we can reach a broader audience. It's not just here's the Cornell method, but here's something cool. That, Al that might Allison has some good ones too. I might uh, <laughs> might share some other people who have uh, adopted the strategy and been more clear. Mine are a little bit. Uh, representative of what my brain looks like, whereas Allison's are very organized. So cool. um, I would actually recommend Allison's over mine, but I'm happy you're adding it. That's really exciting. So yeah. <laughs> we'll yeah. take, yeah, I would love to have the different uh, different ways there. And if Allison wants to contribute um, a video or a link or an example, that'd be great. She said yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I can't see the chat because I am screen sharing. Yeah. Um, and our last mandatory module is the academic integrity piece. Um, we want this to be very positive because students are coming in. They haven't done anything yet. So we're trying to yeah. highlight, you know, uh, as as the Madeline Law video uh, shows on the on the Brock website, encouraging collaboration within reasonable limits. Um, so from there we go to uh, our academic integrity module. Some people may have already seen this because it has been incorporated in courses before, but we feel like it's a, a nice reach over everything and it's necessary. Um, from there, we'll upload the certificate again of completion, trackable piece, and then we're going to have students participate in a um, not too long, but a uh, scenario quiz through Sakai. So again, practicing, completing a quiz on Sakai, um, but it's going to be scenarios. Is this collaboration or is this misconduct? so that uh, students can practice that. And then we've got some links here for how to avoid it, what happens if it, ha you know, if there is misconduct and uh, some sample sheets for citing, et cetera. Um, we've got three more pieces to, to go through. Uh, hopefully you're still with me. Uh, we have a checklist for academic writing and this introduction that hopefully will help students identify themselves within this. Uh, so some students may not realize that academic writing is for them. So we're, you know, we're letting people know that in, in most social sciences and applied health sciences, there will be writing components as well. We've got a great Maggie made video that she's uh, re-recording because she wants to be excellent, but um, We've got a video here that's going to talk about the different types of academic writing. Maggie, if you want to speak to it, you can. Yeah, it's it's all it's it's OK. I just have to revise it because um, my history peeps uh, said I have to mention primary and secondary sources or I will not be allowed to live. So I'm just doing a recording, but it's specifically rewording the history section if anyone looks at it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so after highlighting the different types of writing in different faculties and programs, we move into the library and connecting for research. So we've got their Meet Omni video embedded here, and then we're going to have a task where they need to go to the library and actually find um, a particular article that we will outline for them and you know, sort of interact with that. So they have to go through the searching process, and then we're going to have a multiple choice test that ask them questions about the article so that we know they found it and then um, practice uh, identifying what's a proper quotation from the article and what's a, a proper paraphrase. Um, so again, very library uh, heavy on the end of this because it's so important for that research piece. In the sciences, we're working at Maggie, if you want to jump at any point, but we're working um, closely with the science department which is nice because one of our team members, Sonia, works in both. So she knows what they're preparing um, and then we're sort of connecting it with what we do as sort of a review. So students will come here and we have a, um, a module. This is not 100% polished, but uh, it's ready to show today. Um, so students will click through this and um, what it does is provides a lot of biology and chemistry concepts but we're not teaching it right away. Instead, we're actually asking students to answer a question or try to answer a question first. Um, this one is a drag and drop. We're working on changing that. But uh, yeah, it's um, not accessible when it's drag and drop, but um, 
we, if we, it, it, you can move forward without doing it. So okay. um, we may leave that one. Usually we do multiple choice because that's more accessible. And from here, what, what students will see after every question is why am I looking at this? Where might I see this in my first year? Um, and then if they haven't or they aren't familiar with it, we give them a little bit of information to help them fill in some gaps on that concept. If they want more information from here, we're going to provide links in our resources where they can go and learn more. Um, I want to show uh, another one. So I will say to show more, just FYI, the biology department, for example, is working on a, a more thorough transition course. So that'll be first we were thinking to refer them to Khan Academy, but they're going to be referred to that that particular um, transition. It is a free program, but I think it's five, you know, it's quite extensive. They're actually going to be teaching some of these grade 12 concepts. Mm -hmm. And some of our questions we're going to have help for the students. If they need to see the periodic table, they can click here and see that and then go back and try to answer the question again. Um, Sonia's made this very uh, friendly, I guess is maybe not the right word, but you can try and try again to answer these questions until you get it right so that you know you, you it's not a no, you're wrong. Um, it's just a, you know, try again. Uh, so students will do this and then from here we have a module on and this one is complete on um, lab report writing. And after that module again, completing certificates as they go, then students will go through and do a very similar uh, library research assignment, but a science based one, um, but it will mimic the, the writing assignment uh, using the library resources. And finally, because I'm sure you're Ready to be done with me talking. <laughs> um, we are going to do a very similar process for the um, math and stats, and this is not uh, directly for the math department, um, but it's for students in other courses that are going to see math throughout their their career um, with us. So it's business students, computer science students, etc. Um, and uh, as Maggie spoke to in a different um, meeting, some of these students may have taken one grade 12 math but it might not be the grade 12 math that they needed for the course that they'll go into. So this is going to be very much like the science where we ask them to try a question. And from there, then they'll get a little bit of um, information on how to go about solving that type of question and what course they may see it in. So that students again can sort of identify beforehand that, hey, there's a gap here. Where can I go for help before I come into the program? And, and finally, the, yeah. and the stats, we're doing one for stats because that's another area where students, they may not do it in first year, but this is social science. It, so this is when people ask, like, do they have to do just one? They can do both. And also there could be incentive attached, attached to that by the professor. Um, and again, we're not teaching the stats. We're, we're saying, OK, what did the grade 12 data management class look like? What are some pieces that some students might come in with and some might not? And um, also, I, I should mention in August, we do have uh, our drop-in service, which is run by upper year students. So normally we don't run it in the summer, but um, I'm planning on running it in August with specific times so that these students will be available really to complement this program. So you could have live support, well, live online support. <laughs> Um, and then so again, the, the functions we're showing here, it seems like a lot, but our conversation with Leanne, oh, I remember now what I wanted to say about the assignment. Our, in our conversation with Leanne, we wanted to highlight all the things that they might see so they can again practice and experiment with this before the stress kicks in maybe in September. Um, one of those things being resources. A lot of people have moved towards lesson tabs, but if they can't find something, maybe they go check the resources. So that will be part of the assignment uh, as well. And finally, they'll get to the last tab that will show up for them, and that is going to be eventually uh, what happens next. And our next steps here, uh, congratulations on completing this program. You may want to go to your community group with the BU4U links, um, register with accessibility services, uh, and here's a link to academic advising, things like that. So this page is being worked out as people uh, hope to be included. Good, Maggie? I think so. I think I, that question at the beginning of how to collaborate, you might have some ideas about things that you'd like, um, like we'll add you to Sakai, but to connect uh, with, with myself, uh, if you can't remember who, uh, like through CPI, they'll get to us, but um, just to let us know what you're thinking about for your students. Um, again, we, we are really 
trying for that eight hours because it's right now it's not required and we don't want to overwhelm. We want to support. So that's, I think it, things could change and we, and we have changed our stuff multiple times per week, like saying it's got to get cleaner. It's got to get cleaner. So we're thinking about that supportive pathway, um, knowing that they can go back to it. Um, but uh, things are tracked. Each lesson is tracked. Um, different pieces are tracked. We're not going to track everything for completion of U101 because that would be crazy, but there are some key components that will say if they do these. Most of those are the certificates for the modules that, yes, they've done U101. Um, so the ESL, so they're part of our working group, actually. So part of the working group, it's like the biology department, is to say, what are people doing? Um, they like to do their own thing. They've got their own uh, flavor for those students. All income students will, will be invited to do U101. So uh, they're at the table. So my, um, I haven't seen their stuff yet. They've seen ours. So I think the ideally what that looks like is to make sure they can, like everyone, focus on maybe, like to me, it's what comes first before ours. Like it's how do they prepare for the U101 or what is unique to those students that they will offer them. So it isn't uh, extra work because, it, you know, even with language barrier, let's say, it could take them longer to work through pieces. So we don't want it to be just longer. We want it to make sense. So uh, we're working with them. So they're part of the working group on purpose. <laughs> and grad studies also, if anyone thinks of grad students, what we're thinking, they're also at the table. We're probably, what we're thinking right now is a duplication of the site, cleaning out of things that don't relate, and then they can add stuff they want. So uh, that's how we're gonna approach that. And accessibility, we've been discussing with them. They're also kind of like grad studies where they're trying to decide, will we duplicate the site? And because there's some unique things for accessibility students that we can't just add to it because then it creates confusion, but it might be just a, this is their site. So we're working through some pieces. Do we want to do that extensively? No, because it's gonna be, we don't want to track that. And then it's just, it could get confusing on the students and like all these sites but there could be a few core split offs. Can I ask a bit about um, the community groups and, and the ways that we can do this sort of um, social connection? Um, is that what that, that's gonna look like and how can we tap into those? So the that is under um, like the larger Brad Clark uh, BU4U program. So Tanya, uh, Tanya Bradley is running a lot of the uh, groups as well as ROCKS What's her last name? Troll Luck or something? Oh, don't tell her. Um, she's doing a lot of the engagement communities. So they're busy right now doing a lot of networking to figure out how do we split these people up? Like, so they're working with faculties, they're working with um, the different services because everyone kind of has their cluster. And yes, students could be in multiple engagement groups, but how can we make this work like complementary? Right? So they're, th those are the people that are working on that right as we speak. I could pull up and, a PowerPoint on that, but. And um, it's connect, but it's connected to this site kind of like they would jump off to that after they've done this sort of academic grounding. Yeah. Or, or they could do it at the same time. Yeah, it's, I guess it's the access point because the BU, like the Brocky 101 will be, they'll, I want them to access it. They'll have access earlier than the engagement groups. They will have access hopefully beginning of August. The engagement groups, the plan is that they happen um, the week before classes start. So you're getting everybody, they, they definitely want to have it before classes start. Um, so they have that community kind of growing right then, but it's not going to be a long time before. So maybe the week before. Okay, thanks. Thanks for that overview. It's like a lot of, it's a lot of information. Um, Sorry. People have been putting their chat, their chat in there. No, it's great. It's really interesting. And I'm glad uh, people are kind of giving their feedback and are really interested in, um, in what's happening. So can other people, um, does anybody else have any questions or things that they want to uh, talk about um, specifically? I do have a, so this, these sessions are actually a series, which I didn't quite realize, but so we can, <laughs> we can customize them. I have a, a feedback form that I'm going to send out a sort of start, stop, continue. Um, and then I'd like you to put, if you want to know more about a specific element of the, um, uh, of the University 101, or if you want to dig a little bit deeper into a cross program learning communities or in your course specifically about building learning communities, um, we have some resources about 
um, building teams within your within your site as well. So just to make sure we're not uh, way off the mark of what you were expecting for today, um, I think this has been really helpful to know. This is I really wanted people to know that this was happening, and I think that there's a lot of interest, not just for our first year. So ways that we can make sure because I think. Um, there were some points there that our second and third and fourth years are going to need this because everybody is kind of new to this whole world of everything being online. So thank you to your, for your team to be putting this together so extensively. I really appreciate it. Um, and then I'll open it up again. I didn't mean to like kind of shut it down, but I am going to put the feedback form in the chat um, and then I'll let anybody else ask any questions if they have anything or if, Meg, if you wanted to ask something specific. To I don't even know if my thing is working now. It got really, really quiet. That was weird. There is one hand up. Joanne has her hand up. Yes, oh, Joanne. Joanne. Oh, it's so, so nice to see you that. again, Joanne. <laughs> long time no see, Julia. Um, I probably just missed this due to distraction in the house, which I now have total sympathy for the students. Um, so good learning experience. But uh, Maggie, when will these um, modules or this Brock 101 be available for incoming students to do? Like, for example, I would be keen, right? And nervous, right? I'm starting first year university. Holy crap. I have time in the summer. I want to learn everything I can about what I'm going to need to know. Could I do that? Yeah, that's that's why we've done you, you 101 before. Can you hear me? Because it sounds yep. weird. OK, yep, it you. sounds almost too quiet, like I'm talking to myself. Um, we've tried to do you 101 before and, and timing has always been an issue. So we've tried August, but then no one's there. So online is huge. Um, honestly, I'm like Brad, every time Brad Clark talks about it, he says mid August. I'm like, uh, uh August 1st, August 1st. So we're hitting, I want it August 1st available. So students have the entire month for questions, for engagement, for, for getting, um, because right after smart starts July, it's they're doing something, keep them engaged, get them engaged right away. So. August right. first. Let's just call it awesome because it's all <laughs> online. They can work through it at their own pace. So yeah. Yeah, the sooner the better. Thanks, guys. This was great. I'm also going to share it. So this is being recorded. I'm going to stop the recording now. Um, and all of these materials and 